Yeah, I want to go over uh, how to make the colloidal silver. This is uh, with a Dr. Beck pulser that has the silver add-on. It's uh, made by Silver Smoke Research, and I got the, I got two of these off of eBay. This is the one I'm just going to show you, like the inside of it, and uh, you can see it's got a circuit board on it, and it has a three-position switch. You know, which is you can see it flashing. That's for the Beck. Um, zapping blood zapping and if you flip it the other way it goes to this lead here uh, which is for the colloidal silver so when you put, put this together uh, when you you know what you'll do is recharge these batteries every once in a while and you could notice these are 9.6 volts they're not even 9 volts um, the ones I think I have in here right are 9 volts but I used both types um, <clears throat> but you'll have to recharge the batteries every so often they do last a lot of hours still but this is a three battery setup, not a four battery setup, but it still conforms exactly to the Beck protocol. And uh, here's the other unit. I have two of these actually. I got them off eBay. And what I have this, just to show you what it's doing, it's just putting out um, voltage DC through the wires, right? So if you turn on the voltmeter, excuse me, you turn on the, um, the unit itself. And there's the volts. It's 26.9, actually, it's 27, basically. Three 9 volt batteries. So that's all you're putting through um, this these wires right now. And you have to have it plugged into the other jack, this jack here. In other words, there's two jacks. If you have it plugged in this jack, this is the blood pulsing. And this is how this unit works. This is, a, this is from Silver Smoke Research and eBay. This is actually a good quality unit. I've been using the hell out of these things too. Standard Beck protocol type thing. This would be the blood pulsing side. You see the red green light going off and you plug it in. And uh, basically, this is actually AC. It wouldn't be, but you know, you could flash these um, back and forth, the voltage. It's actually doing AC, not DC though. But the actual thing for making um, colloidal silver is just putting the three batteries together that's all it is now you can use 36 volts 30 volts or whatever a lot of times I like using a 9.6 volt batteries because it's more like it's closer to 30 volts but that's fine so the only thing you have to do from here it's uh, very simple okay so um, I have the unit plugged in it's in the, the side of the unit that does the colloidal silver it's just basically attaching the batteries you know the battery voltage in series to um, these um, metal rods which are 49 silver now I'm going to make a mention about the 49 silver now <laughs> I'm going to recommend you use 49 silver but it's actually far more important to use distilled water than it is to use 49 silver versus 39 silvers um, if you actually do a little calculation you say you're going to be making five parts per million five parts silver per um, you know million parts of water well, if you take that five parts per million and you multiply it by the difference between three nine silver and four nine silver, you're talking about nine ten thousandths, nine ten thousandths times far five part five parts per million. The measure of impurity that you would have in this solution would be in billions, billions. In other words, the um, distilled water is not even that pure, even when you buy good quality distilled water. Now I just buy um, this stuff right here. <laughs> Great value, it's just still water. 88 cents is actually fun, plenty good enough. But you know, if you didn't have the 49 silver versus the 39 silver, I really don't see why it would be a problem to use 39s. But I'll tell you, use 49s to be on the side of err on the side of caution, and definitely, definitely always use distilled water. Can't be fudging with that stuff. But you understand my point. Just do a simple little arithmetic. The difference between three nine silver and four nine silver, you're talking nine ten thousandths, nine ten thousandths different. If you take nine ten thousandths times the amount of silver you're actually imparting in a solution, which is five parts per million, you're talking an error of impurities. In other words, impurities that could be added in the billions, billions. Nothing's that pure, pretty much. You know, this isn't um, freaking. Your body's not that pure, the air you breathe is not that pure, and nothing's that pure, okay? So, uh, it's a pretty small difference. So, 
If you did not have 49 silver, you're probably okay with this stuff. Now you flip the switch over. Like if you flip the switch this way, here, you can see that's this side for doing the blood pulse. And you flip the switch the other way, and you notice this little orange light comes on. And what happens is, say I move these rods together and touch them, you'll see the orange light is on real bright. That's just telling you this orange light, or yellow light, it's actually yellow, will actually uh, get brighter as the solution becomes um, a little bit uh, colloidal silver, piece at a time. And um, it's, like, it's going to go very slow in the beginning. As it gets going, it goes a lot faster. Now I'll tell you one little trick to kind of jumpstart this process. Say for instance in this container, now you notice it's uh, if you put two ounces of already made up colloidal silver, then add it in, you know, regular colloidal silver you made before. You put a little bit of that and then you add it to rest with um, distilled water. That would jumpstart it because you actually made the properly made colloidal silver, but it's enough in there to actually cause the electricity to jump between these two um, wire, these two um, rods. In other words, as distilled water, it's very difficult to do. But if you actually had a little bit of colloidal silver in the distilled water, it would jump start it a lot quicker. Now, the thing I use to measure it is this. It's a quality water tester, TDS EZ. Very simple to use. I'll show you how to use it. And um, you notice these jars, these are just regular plastic jars, right? Um, there's some kind of food. Yeah, I just cleaned them out, you know, I just reused them or something. I put black tape around them so they don't have light that goes in it. And uh, I'll keep this lid on here nice and loose like this for now. And it's going to take a while, but once it starts cooking, in other words, once it starts getting up to one part per million as you measure it with this gauge and two parts per million, then it starts moving up a lot faster. And I usually make it up to about about seven parts per million. I don't go crazy and try to put it up really high. Actually, five parts per million does everything. You don't need to even get it at ten. That's ridiculous to me. That's how I do it. So anyway, um, just let this cook a while, and I'll come back and show you the process. And you have to clean the rods with the uh, scouring pad and wipe them off with some... Um, clean towels, paper towels, every once in a while because these will accumulate um, basically silver particles on it. You know, it'll get oxidation. You don't want that going in the water. But uh, that's it. It's a very simple process and uh, it's very cheap to do too. Okay, so it's been cooking a while. Um, this actually takes a little while to make the uh, cloud silver. So I'll turn on the uh, parts per million meter and you can see it's going to be says four well five four or five now what I do is I bring this up to about seven or eight on this meter because I notice when I check it about a couple hours later sometimes it's like one a little bit less it could be six or seven but that's plenty that's plenty if it's more than five it's it's plenty good and you notice I have to clean these rods and see how they get a little darker and we just take some of the scouring powder Scour, I mean scratch pad, you just go over them and you clean them up nice and shiny and you wipe it off with a nice paper towel and put it back in. And as this gets up to this higher level, like when you see this, um, you know, it says it's higher, it's like, well, it's five, um, it's not going to take much longer to finish it up. So this will be another batch all set to go. So that's simple, very simple. And this, like I said, I got it from uh, Silver Smoke Research off of eBay. I just re uh, searched for uh, Beck Pulser. And I don't know, I think they start their bids at 75 or 80 and they go up to like 150 Actually, I picked up one for 75 and 595 shipping. I was lucky. And I bid one for 80 bucks, 595 shipping. So I have two of them. And I use uh, good quality rechargeable batteries. So constantly keep them in service all the time. Okay, it's been going a few hours, and uh, time to test the water. So this is about, eh, almost a, it's about a quart in here. It's about a quart, so I'm going to use the meter. You see it's set on zero. And we get a readout. Seven. Seven parts per million. 
that's okay. It might actually turn out to be six if it sits a few hours or whatever. Sometimes it goes down like one. Sometimes, but that's enough. If it's over five parts per million, you you got plenty. You don't even need to make it ten. So um, this will be done. And uh, I continue to make this stuff quite a bit. And um, it's good for a lot of different things.